Well, obviously, you know who's sitting next to my left here. He is somebody that means so much to this organization. Stephen Vogt now with the Seattle Mariners. Just, you know, last time, last couple times we talked in person, I felt like I was Barbara Walters, and we were having these super emotional, like you had tears. All of a sudden, I started choking up because it was very emotional. It's now nice just to have a regular conversation. Mm -hmm. How are you? I'm doing great. Obviously, it's uh, it's good to see you. Good to be back in Oakland. Uh, every time I come back here, it's just it's home. It feels like home. So I'm doing great. It's been a great season, uh, great first year coaching, um, really enjoying it, really, uh, really learning a lot and, and having a blast doing it. So well, you think about the transition in careers going from a player to a coach. And, and I think about your career as somebody who cared so much and you prepared not only for yourself, but you prepared for the pitching staff and you were you're very courteous and you cared a lot about your, your teammates. What's it like now as a coach? So you got to care about everybody. Yeah, it's it, it's honestly not all that different from the last couple of years I was playing. You know, when you're a backup catcher, your job is, yes, to be ready to play when it's your your day to play. But it's also your your job is to make sure that all the pitchers are getting what they need. Your teammates are getting what you need. The starting catcher is getting what he needs. Like you really are kind of a especially as an older backup catcher, a little bit of a player coach. And no doubt. So a lot of what the things I've been doing or what I'm doing now, it's just I don't have to hit anymore, thank <laughs> goodness. Uh, you know, so for me, it's um, it's been a very smooth transition. And Scott Service and the rest of the staff has really done a great job of helping me uh, learn very quickly. What is the biggest difference going from playing to coaching? There's got to be something that's dramatically different. You have zero control over the outcome of the game as a coach. You can prepare, you can help them uh, have all the information they need, give them all the tools that you or resources you have to be able to enable them to go do the best of their ability that night. But at the end of the day, you can't do it. When you're a player, yeah, you can't always, you're not always the one hitting, but when it is your turn, it's within your control to go get the job done. And so as a coach, you literally have no control over the outcome of the game other than in equipping every player with all the information and, and advice that you can. And you're still living and dying with all these <laughs> losses and wins and everything. Yeah, absolutely. it's crazy. Yeah. You know, when, when, when you look at going forward for you, what have you learned where you go, man, I didn't realize the manager does this because you were so much involved. And like you said, it's almost like you were like a player manager at time. But what what have you learned from coaching? Look at the manager. I don't know. You're now the quality control yeah. coach. Like what have you learned that you didn't know? The biggest thing that I is how many people are working behind the scenes to give the 26 guys on the roster everything they need, right? Um, you always know that there's a lot of people that are working for you, but the amount of conversations, the amount of meetings, the amount of time that's put into each individual guy and the plan that the staff, the trainers, the strength coach, the, the analytics team, how many people and how many hours of the day go into each individual to get them to be at their best? I had no clue <laughs> how many people were yeah. working for me to be at my best and how many people I don't think all of us know. No. I don't think the media no. knows. I don't think the fans know. No, they, it, it really is. There are so many people working behind the scenes to get the best for and out of every player. And that's something that I was punched in the face with at spring training with all the meetings and how many people were in the room. It was uh, really cool to see how many people care about each individual guy. How much do you think about that last game? <laughs> uh, I'd be lying if I said not multiple <laughs> times a week. I mean, obviously coming back, I haven't taken yeah. my eyes off the Budweiser Terrace out there when yeah. the ball hit. So um, I, it was such a magical day. Um, again, I you know I still keep in touch with a lot of people over on the Oakland side, and um, just how much the organization celebrated my family and me, and um, that last day will forever be something that. I remember, you know, I remember when Cots told me they were going to do it. And I said, you guys don't have to do that. That's fine. And he goes, no, we're going to. And um, something I would have never asked for, obviously, but um, just felt so honored to have my teammates and all my family and, and the organization do that. You literally couldn't write a better script. It was almost like a Disney movie yeah. to an end of somebody's career. And we actually talked about this yesterday with Dallas Braden right here on Ace Cast Live about your very last day. You're still down there blocking balls. You're still doing that whole thing. You didn't have to do that. How much do you think that rubs off on showing the next generation that, you know what, to the very end, to the very last day, you give it everything you got? Yeah, I mean, I hope it rubs off a lot, right? Uh, that's the way I was raised through the game is every day you come out here, 
whether it's the last day of spring training, the last day of the season, the first day of the season, you never know which rep it's going to click. You never know which yeah. swing it's going to click. You never know any of that. You have to put in your work every single day because that's part of your job, one. But two, it's just the right way to go about your business. This game's too hard, um, you know, and, and the skill goes away if you don't work on it. And that was one of the things that I really prided myself on was making sure I did my job every single day, no matter what it was. Well, it was so great just being a part of so much of your career. I don't know if you remember this, but I walked down that hallway with you after you got back from the All-Star game. and We did an interview after that. And then, of course, you left. You come back. And the, those interviews that we did those final days and seeing your children and knowing that they'll remember this and you'll have it for the rest of your life. Just thank you for allowing us here all these years to be a part of your journey, because I think no matter what, I know we got these hall of famers up here, but everybody's going to remember you as truly one of the great Oakland A's. Well, it really means a lot. And I know um, for me, it, it was never, never about accolades. It was never about things. It was competing every day and giving a hundred percent of me to my teammates, to the organization and to everybody. And my wife, Alyssa and I, you know, we speak so fondly of Oakland. It will always be home. We'll always, part of us will always be in Oakland A, no matter where I go to work. Um, and it's because of you guys telling the stories and, and getting those out. Um, I think just there's there's friends and there's people that will be a part of our life forever because of our time here in Oakland. And we, we're super thankful for it. The great Stephen Vogt right here on A's Cast Live.